<coughs> hey, buddy, could you pass me the hand sanitizer? Yeah, here you go. Thanks, man. All right, good to go. Am I, though? How exactly does that work? Let's say I have COVID and I'm contagious. So I'm actively shedding virus particles. Sure, coronavirus can and is spread through the air, but it can also be spread by shaking hands with someone who's infected. And then using your hands to eat food, for example. So what happens when coronavirus particles are exposed to something like hand sanitizer or soap or comes into contact with a surface cleaning solution like bleach? Well, let's take a look. Today, we're looking at how to kill viruses, and we're going to start with hand sanitizer. The key ingredient in hand sanitizers is usually a mix of different alcohols, both isopropyl alcohol and ethanol alcohol. Alcohols have been used as disinfectants for a long time, at least since the 1800s, and perhaps even as far back as the 1300s. The long and short of it is that ethanol and isopropyl alcohol can disrupt the membrane around membrane-bound viruses like the coronavirus. Remember the structure of viruses from the previous videos in this series. Many viruses have a membrane around the outside. That membrane features those knobby or spike-type proteins that are essential for virus entry into prospective host cells. If you can mess up or eliminate that membrane, then you've essentially killed the virus particle. Cell membranes are made up of molecules called phospholipids. The key thing to know about these phospholipids is that they have a hydrophilic, water-loving head group and a hydrophobic, water-repelling tail section. This means that they can form something of a contiguous layer that encapsulates a biological cell, or in this case, coming together to form that outer layer of something like a coronavirus particle. To visualize what ethanol does to cell membranes, let's look at a computer model. Okay, the, the red parts at the top and at the bottom, those are the hydrophilic head groups of those phospholipids. And the teal parts in the middle, those would be the hydrophobic tails of the phospholipids. Now, if we put some ethanol in here, and that'll be shown in sort of a yellowish color, you can see that the ethanol can essentially permeate right into the middle of that membrane. All right, let's look at another computer model. And perhaps here you're thinking, how can this one be a membrane? Well, in this particular model here, you have water at the top and at the bottom with the lipid bilayer membrane in the middle. Now, the folks who put this one together, they didn't show those hydrophobic tails just for the sake of simplicity. If we were to show those hydrophobic tails, it would probably look something like this. So you can see that, that it's a membrane with phospholipids in the middle and water at the top and at the bottom. For now, I'll just show it like this so that we can sort of really readily see what's happening. All right, let's add some ethanol and let's look at what happens. So over the span of maybe just a second or two, the membrane completely loses its integrity. And you can imagine that if there were phospholipid molecules shown here, that they'd really be all over the place. This membrane has been very, very badly damaged. Now, remember, not all viruses have membranes around the outside. Coronavirus does. So hand sanitizer is a pretty effective way to eliminate the coronavirus. Influenza, same story. But something like norovirus, which causes the stomach flu or a stomach bug, that doesn't have a membrane around the outside. You know what else doesn't? Rhinovirus, which causes the common cold. That's right, hand sanitizer, not very effective against the spread of the common cold. All right, what about soap? One caveat before I start. There are many different types of soap. What I'll show you here is just one type of soap and how that works. But the mechanism from one type of soap to the next 
is reasonably similar. All right, let's zoom in here. Now, the key ingredient molecule in this soap is something called sodium stearate. The first thing that sodium stearate can do is to disrupt the membrane around viruses like the coronavirus. Structurally, this soap molecule, this sodium stearate, has a hydrophilic head group and a hydrophobic tail. This makes it really similar to those phospholipid molecules that I was showing you earlier. Those are the molecules that make up a cell membrane. The sodium stearate can essentially integrate itself in between those phospholipids to disrupt the membrane's structural integrity. Let's take a look at another view of it. And here, this is another cell membrane, and you can see those blue circles? Those are the soap molecules. And in green, you have proteins within the cell membrane. The soap molecules cause that membrane to dissociate and break apart, and then the soap molecules will actually isolate those proteins away from the phospholipids into what are called protein detergent complexes. When it comes to the coronavirus, the membrane proteins, those are an absolutely critical part of the virus, right? They allow the virus to gain entry into a potential host cell. If soap can effectively remove the membrane and the proteins that are lodged in the membrane, then the virus is completely deactivated. Well, if this is true, then why doesn't soap actually destroy your skin cells? They also have phospholipid membranes. Well, if we take a look at the structure of skin, we can see that it's made up of different cell layers. The outer part of the outermost cell layer is actually composed of dead skin cells. This makes them pretty much immune to the impacts of soap. And incidentally, this is the same reason why viruses can't gain entry into your body through your skin. You're literally dead on the outside. Viruses become a problem when they're inhaled and come into contact with live cells in your mouth, nose, lungs, or if they're ingested and come into contact with live cells in your stomach, and so on. One more note about soap. Is soap effective against viruses that don't have an outer membrane? Well, sort of, but not in the same way. Soap really isn't effective in destroying viruses like rhinovirus and norovirus because they don't have membranes, right? They just have a hard shell protein coat around the outside. But when you wash your hands with soapy water for a good amount of time, you can literally wash virus particles off your hands and down the drain. All right, last question. What does household cleaner, like bleach, do to viruses? Well, the key molecule in bleach is something called sodium hypochlorite. And here it is here. Sodium hypochlorite dissociates quite readily in water. And that sodium ion and that chlorine portion, they sort of break apart. The hypochlorite portion, that's the portion with the chlorine in it, will form something called hypochlorous acid. While there's still some question about exactly how bleach impacts viruses, the most likely thing that happens is that bleach destroys or denatures the proteins. For a virus like coronavirus, introduce bleach, destroy those knobby or spike proteins, deactivate the virus. Even for viruses like norovirus or rhinovirus with no membranes, they still have protein receptors on the outside. Destroy those knobby or spike proteins, deactivate the virus. I should say here that bleach can be incredibly harmful to humans. It can cause chemical burns on the skin if used in high concentrations. And if it's ingested, it can cause serious damage. So please follow the recommended safety precautions if you're ever working with bleach. So hand sanitizer, soap, bleach, all good for destroying viruses outside of the body and on surfaces. But what happens if a virus gets into the body? How does the body combat viruses once it gets infected? And how do vaccines help? Do they help? Well, to answer those questions, be sure to check out the next video in our virus series about vaccines, 
and the immune system. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Yeah.